This video is about how to set up a short distillation column in Aspen Heises. The column will process 30,000 kilograms per hour of a feed containing a mixture of benzene and toluene. The thermal condition of the feed is equal to 1 and the composition of the feed is 0.44 in mole fraction of the light key component. The distillate product should have a composition of 0.975 and the bottom product should not exceed 0.035 in mole fraction of the light key component. The column should operate at atmospheric pressure and Peng-Robinson equation of state can be used to determine the thermodynamic properties of the mixture. To create a new simulation file, click File and select New Case. The first step is to add the components. Go to the component list in the property tab and then click the add button. To select the first component, click on the search for text box and type the name, in this case benzene, and click the add button. In the same way, type the name of the next component, toluene, and then click the add button. You can change the name of the component list you just have created. To do that, click on the component list label on the property tab, click on the list name, and type a new name. In this case, we're going to name it Aromatic Mix. To select the fluid package, click on the fluid package label on the property tab, and click the Add button. Now, find the name of the fluid package on the list and click on the name. You can also rename the fluid package you just have selected by doing click on the fluid package label and typing a new name on the appropriate field. In this case, we're going to name it Peng Robinson. Once the component and the fluid package has been selected, we're ready to set the simulation. First, Click on the Simulation tab. In this new window called Flowsheet, we're going to set all the inputs for our simulation. I'm going to move the palette to the other side to have a clearer view of the screen. First, we're going to set the fifth stream. To do that, click on the blue arrow, that is a material stream. And to click anywhere in the Flowsheet. Double click on the material stream you just have installed. A new window will appear. In this window, we're going to write all the information we know about the feed stream. First, we're going to rename it by doing click on the stream name text box. Type a new name and press enter. Type the corresponding value of vapor fraction on the text box and press enter. Now we do the same for the pressure and the mass flow rate. As we can observe, there is a yellow message that says unknown compositions. To set the composition of the stream, click on the composition label and click on the text box to insert the compositions. Type the corresponding value on the appropriate text box and press enter. In this new window, we're going to type the toluene's composition, in this case 0.65, and click OK. As we can see, the yellow message now turned from yellow to green, which means that all the required stream information is complete. One important parameter that Aspen Heises calculates for a stream are the k-values. To see the k-values, Click on the k-value label. As we can see in this case, the k-value of benzene is bigger than the k-value of toluene. This means that we can use conventional distillation to separate this mixture. To close this window, just click on the close button. Now, to install a distillation column, click the columns label in the object palette. Now, choose the short distillation item and move it anywhere in the flow sheet. To install the column, Click on the flow sheet 
and double click the shortcut distillation column. In this new window that appears, we're going to specify the stream that fits the column by doing click on the combo box and do click on the stream you just have installed. Now you can note the red message asking for the product streams. To install the product stream, click on the text box and type a new name for the stream. In this case, we're going to call QCondenser to the energy stream of the condenser and do the same for the rest of the streams. Now, the red message asks for the key components. To input the rest of the specifications, click the parameters label and watch this new window that appear. This new window asks for the light key in the bottoms, the heavy key in the distillate, the condenser and reboiler pressure, and the external reflux ratio. Now, to select a component, click on the drop-down list and find the right component. Then, type the composition in mold fraction in the corresponding text box as indicated in the video. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, the column should operate at atmospheric pressure. So, we're going to type 101.325 kPa in both fields to specify a constant pressure along the distillation column. Now, let's stop for one moment at this point. Note that the minimum reflux ratio has been calculated by HISIS at this point, and that the red message now asks for the external reflux ratio. This value should be input by the user and could be any value bigger than the minimum reflux ratio. For example, let's assume that the external reflux ratio is 10% bigger than the minimum reflux ratio. So we're going to multiply 1.567 by 1.1, resulting in 1.7237. Now, let's type this value on the corresponding field. Now you can see that the message turned from red to green and it say OK. That means that the results from the shortcut distillation are ready to view. To see the results, click the Performance tab. In this window, you can see the results from the shortcut simulation. These results depend on the value of the external reflux ratio that we input. In the next section, we're going to learn how the external reflux ratio impact on these values and the tools that Aspen Heist has to help us to analyze this effect. You can close this window now. One tool that Aspen Heist has to analyze the results from a simulation are the data tables. To create a new data table, first click on the data table label and click the Add button. On this new window, we will select the variables we want to see and manipulate by doing click on Add and then we're going to select the object where our variables are found. In this case, we want to see the variables from the distillation column. So we're going to select T100, which is the name of the distillation column. Now we're going to select the variable by doing click on the name, in this case the external reflux ratio and then click the Add button. As we can see, the variable we have selected now appears at the top of the window. Now we're going to add the actual trace, the condenser duty and the reboiler duty in the same way. You can close this window now. We can also rename our case study by going back to data tables and typing a new name on the corresponding field, as we learned before. Now, go back to the data table we just have created. In this new window, we can see the variables we just have selected. Note that the value for external reflux appears in blue. This means that this value is an input and can be modified. The values appearing in black are the results from the simulation. Now, Let's modify the input value for the external reflux ratio. 
In this case, we're going to assume the external reflux ratio is 20% times the minimum reflux ratio by multiplying the results for the minimum reflux ratio times 1.2, resulting in 1.8804. Now, let's type this value in the corresponding field. As we can observe, the actual trace and the condenser duty got reduced, but the reboiler duty went bigger. By following this procedure, we were able to learn the effect of the reflux ratio on the results from the shortcut simulation. You can close this window now. In this new part, we're going to learn how to ask Asman Heise to do several simulations for us by changing the value of one variable. To do this, first, we're going to insert a spreadsheet by going to the common tab palette and selecting the spreadsheet item. Now, move anywhere in the flow sheet and to click. Now, Double click on the item to access the input window. You can change the name of the spreadsheet by typing a new name on the appropriate field. Now, we're going to add the variable we want to manipulate by doing click on the Add Import button. And then, we're going to find the variable that we want. In this case, we're going to select the external reflux ratio from the shortcut distillation column. Now, we can see that the variable we have selected appear on the imported variable field. Now, we can close this window. The next step is to create a case study. Click Add to create a new case study. In this new window, we're going to select the variable we want to take different values and the variables we want to see the effect on. So, click on the Add button from this window, select the variable we just have inserted in the spreadsheet, the external reflux ratio. And click the Add button. Now, do the same for the variables in the shortcut distillation column that we want to see the effect on, the actual trace and the condenser and reboiler duties. You can close this window now. Now, rename the case study in the same way that we have learned. Now, go back to the case study we just have created. Pay attention to the table at the top of this window. As we can see, the reflux ratio variable is an independent variable. So, we're going to give different values to this variable by indicating a low bound, a high bound, and a step size on the appropriate fields. Now, click on the Run button. Note the green message that says Success. This means that all the simulations converge and now we're ready to see the results. Now, move to the Results tab. We're going to close the palette to have a clearer view of this window. In this window, you can observe the results to all the simulations that Aspen Heises have just made for you. As you can see, the number of stages go smaller as the reflux ratio goes bigger. To have a better view of the results, we can create plots. Now, move to the Plots tab. In this new window, untick the condenser duty so we can plot the external reflux ratio against the number of actual trays and the reboiler duty. Now, let's look at this plot. In this plot, we can observe the effect of the reflux ratio on the actual number of trays and the reboiler duty. As we can see, being close to the minimum reflux ratio makes that the number of actual trays become very big. However, this point is where the reboiler duty found its lower value. However, if we move a little bit further from the minimum reflux ratio, 
we got a smaller number of stages, but the repoiler duty grows bigger. Using this type of analysis is how design engineers choose the best design parameters for a distillation column. This is all for this video. Thank you for watching.